you guys haven't got a chance to see us, we're doing Sibling Rivalry Live once a month in New York City. Our next show will be we're moving to Manhattan. We move it all up. And we're going to be at Sony Hall. Do you know the date? Nope, but you do. March 17th. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name is Bob the Drag Queen. And I'm on a exchange. And this is Sibling, Sibling Rivalry. Rivalry. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi guys! If you love our podcast and you'd like to help support our production and gain access to exclusive content on Patreon, you can do just that! When you pledge a monthly payment of your choosing, you'll gain access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content that isn't available anywhere else! The more pledges we get, the more we will be able to dedicate our time to creating more sibling rivalry content. It's a win-win! We have three tiers for you to choose from to pledge your monthly donation. For our first tier, you can pledge $1 a month and you become a stranger. For this price, you gain the knowledge that you have supported us. <laughs> Appreciate that. For $5 a month, the next tier is a cousin. You're not one of our siblings, but we're totally related. You have access to our locked feed and get to see exclusive content and behind the scenes footage. You'll also be supporting the continuation of Sibling Rapper. Yeah, cuz you can come to the cookout, but don't come to my house. <laughs> With your shoes on. Your shoes. Take your shoes off! Take your fucking shoes off! And our last tier is Sibling. For $10 a month, you came from the same pussy as us. You are one of our siblings. You have access to our locked feed, this exclusive content, and behind the scenes footage. Footage is. Footage is. And you are a huge supporter in the continuation of sibling rivalry. If you do not support us, we assume you're racist. Oh, oh not assume. I, I know. Bet you be, I bet you be watching uh, Tricks and Katya. I bet you watch uh, uh, Vol Whimsically Vol Whimsically Volatile. Uh, I, I, bet you, chase the I bet you subscribe to Race Chaser uh -huh. with your white ass. <laughs> you know what? In fact, if you white, you need to be a sibling. All black folks can do $5. All white motherfuckers need to subscribe more. <laughs> Stop. You're scared of people. Okay, you're right. We'll see you guys next time, and we love you. Bye. All right, peace, guys. Um, can we say that the original intro was so shady because you we used your music video, and I didn't have a music video, so it was just me at Industry Bar. <laughs> just big -ass well, we, we, we used the content we had, honey. <laughs> we used the content we had had. Now it has soak it up. I'm going to uncancel you. Oh. You, were, you, you were canceled until we had this new promo. So today we're talking about cancel culture, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is pretty relevant to us because a lot of our fellow queens have been canceled. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in uh, in the world right now are being canceled. Girl, the fans will cancel you. Well, you honestly, for anything from rape down to saying uh, Manila can't wear a maxi pad dress, <laughs> like the 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 the, uh, the transgressions can be huge or they can be teeny weeny. Oh no, girl, bitch! You said that you hate red M and People are like, you're canceled. You said you like red m and <laughs> <laughs> Literally, Valentina said she like red m and People ready to cancel her because well, she like red m and Okay, time really quick. That was, you know that was about Nina, not Valentina. Was it? The m and Champagne was about Valentina had nothing. I mean, it was, was about Nina Bonina. Nina Bonina, Nina Bonina for Fana Bonana or Summer Bin Laden on Season 9 Brown. It had nothing to do with Valentina. I found But Valentina I embraced it. But yeah, because Valentina is so ridiculous. She fully was like, it's me. It's always been me. <laughs> like, she leaned into it. She was like, it was me. I said it. It's literally an episode of Scooby Doing at the end. You take the mask off Valentina. And it was it's Nina Bonina. The whole, the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. The whole time. Don't talk to me. Don't touch me. Um, I love Julia so Roberts. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. So let, let's let's start with uh, queens who've been canceled. Okay, let's try to name them. Tyra Sanchez. Oh well, she, not been. She is. She's still canceled. Crazy. Arrested. <laughs> Deported. Uh, uh, Sharon Needles. Was she canceled for what? She's her, when she's when the nigger thing. Oh. You don't remember Sharon Needles? Nigga, you heard what I said. <laughs> no, you remember Sharon Needles had the whole N word thing on it. I she... mean, she still does sometimes in New York, walking up the avenue, just screaming the N word all the way down. Oh, so you know, so you you been there? But uh, I never heard the internet cancel her. That's what well, she, well, it was. It was like especially during her season, she was pretty. Got and it. she's also banned from performing in some city. Like she can't get booked in Portland, Oregon. She can't get booked in Seattle. Work. Yeah, like she cannot. She is she's wild. Um, and then, your, of course, Eureka's been canceled. <laughs> I think seven times. Um, RuPaul's, seven pounds. RuPaul's been canceled. The movie Seven Pounds. Will Smith. Seven Pounds Plus, yeah. 
Um, RuPaul's been canceled. Oh, RuPaul is con- RuPaul is always. She stay canceled. She's if canceled. you stay canceled, you gotta get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, RuPaul canceled. You've been canceled. I've been like quasi canceled. Yeah. Trixie's been canceled. Trixie's been canceled. Katya. Well, Katya. I think Katya has never Can, been canceled. Kat, Katya cancels herself. Right. Katya, Katya will come. She will go on national television on Fox News. Murder baby. Drink his blood. And the fans are like, we, like, yeah. like the first coming of Christ. Really. Um, people are trying to kind of cancel me and Monique and 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 Naomi and Trinity. But that's be- not quite canceled culture. That's just they didn't like what y'all because it's not. I feel like cancel culture is usually about breaking some sort of a social agreement or punching down to someone less than you. That's what I feel like cancel culture is. Not like you voted my favorite queen off, you get canceled. Like when Nina Bonina um, kicked Valentina off the show, she didn't get canceled. But when she said that Mexico deserves the hurricane or the earthquake. Oh yeah, I remember that. Because the Mexicans were mean to her, that's when she got canceled. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I get that. Yes, I don't. Th- I don't think you're canceled. No, 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 no. I don't think any- I'm just being silly. I got canceled because I made some Jew jokes at a roast. Oh, really? Yeah, I had a whole Holocaust at a, at a, at a, at a, a roast. I said Jew jokes at the last roast we did. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, I did it. Wow, you feel and you just it. did it too. No, 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 it's not my. See, it's look you. at you. Look at you go. You, you-, you are the Kevin Hart of drag. <laughs> Do you feel good about yourself? Um, I don't feel bad about myself. And also, when you go into that show, you make a social agreement with everyone in the room and everyone on stage that we are all going to be yeah. not politically correct. Yeah. So, so. Ah! Well, you know, that was a big thing in Whoopi Goldberg's career when she did. Um, what is that place in New York that they did the crazy roast? Oh, the Friars Club. The Friars Club. And then. When she painted her boyfriend in blackface. In blackface. Yeah. Oh, girl, the internet. And they were ham. Like, they were like, Whoopi Goldberg, we're done with you. And that, 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 I don't know that she painted him, but I know that he, he came did in blackface, and, and she was there roasting him. her. And also, but like, and that hurt her career for a number of years. That whole Friars Club thing. She I know. Oh, she's fine. I mean, she's on the View. I mean, Whoopi's one of my favorite people on the View. Anyway, uh, so people are trying to kind of cancel Tiffany Haddish because she showed her to New Year's Eve and she completely bombed. Well, doing a bad job is, I mean, that's canceled, like, the fact that, like, they're done with. Like, people just think she's, people do this to, to uh, female comedians all the time. What? People take lady comics, they raise them up as the funniest thing. If you do one thing they don't think is good, they to destroy you. This happens to women in music and comedy all the time. I agree, but it but, but to be fair, she I mean Yeah, she had a bad show. Who I'm cares? not saying she had a bad show. I mean no I'm saying, but I mean she like is is different between doing like you like some things weren't funny, it's like the whole set bomb. And she's But she but had she a can, bad show. You never had a you never, her, you never oh, had a thing where your sick where your voice was gone and you couldn't sing right at the at the on the first episode of All Stars Four. That doesn't mean you should be dead. Ah! <laughs> That doesn't mean, what you call me? That doesn't mean you should be canceled. It just I know. Mean, you know what I mean? No, no, I don't think she should be canceled. I'm just saying, like, it was more but, than just a bad joke. It was, like, she... A bad show. Like, she like she said that she forgot all her jokes, and she didn't really practice as much as she well, should. Well, she probably went out there, a joke didn't go well, and then she started getting nervous and freaking mm-hmm. out, and was like, fuck, I don't know how to recover from this. And then your, your, your energy is struck, yeah. and then your mind is thrown off, but you still... Legally, have to do, have to do a thing. show that is an hour and a half long. And it was so like, can you imagine? It's, 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 this is the picture, Sicily. No, it picture, was 1912, Sicily. It was a, like it's like a 20,000 house seat. The number goes up every time I tell the story. <laughs> it started off at the Lori Beachman Theater with 100 people, and now she's at fucking uh, Barclays. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a New Year's Eve. All the people are this is like how everyone is choosing to end the year. Can we please year. Google the, uh, the arena and the capacity? Uh, of where? Of, of wherever where Tibet was born on New Year's Eve. It's gonna be a little bit of googling, so you have to do okay. some searches. Um, and like, she sold out the entire venue of you know, th- thousands of people, and th- more than three quarters of the room walked out. That you know, hurts. honestly, that would hurt. That would that hurt. Hurts. And so I bad. watched the video, and she was just a sad person on stage, yeah. trying to get through a show and trying to entertain people, and not being able to do it that day. I don't know what she was going through that day. Right. I don't know how rough her week was. I don't know what she came from. I don't know how long she's been on the road. She just had a rough show. Right. And I honestly, it happens to a lot of us. Sometimes you have a rough show. Oh, it happens to me all the, it's to me all the time in New York. I mean, I gotta, I've never, I gotta be honest, I've never really bombed because if I, if I start doing a show and there's like very few people there. Or if I tell a joke and it doesn't work out well, then I kind of just lean into that. 
and then I just modify it from there instead of acting like I'm doing great. Which, by the way, which Tiffany Haddish do? Tiffany Haddish leaned into it, but maybe leaned into it the wrong way because she was like, she was shooken by it. Oh yeah, she was. It shook her. But it's also because she's been riding this high horse for going on two years of like you're like the new. It think you're the funniest black, yeah. black uh, comedian, black female comedian. Like they like she's been, you know what I'm saying. So that's a hard fall. But it doesn't, it doesn't make her not funny. Oh, agreed. You know what I mean, they funny. do this with Amy Schumer. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever like a, 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 it happens a lot with ladies too. Like Lady Gaga. Oh my God! They, it, oh, gay man could not wait to oh. cancel Gaga. Waiting. <laughs> I'll leave me with the dough. I mean, Lady Gaga barely, she never stood a fucking chance. And as soon as people really thought that she wasn't doing a good job, they were like, they turned on her. Yeah. They fucking booked it. They, it's, it's so fucking shady. It is shady. And I don't think it's cute, but it's what it is It is what it is. But she, but now she's uncanceled ever since. But and again, that's not canceled. It's just people are just over, like, people are just no, over No, people here. try to cancel Gaga after Joanne. They were like, I think, Joanne is the no, no. shittiest work I've ever I done. I think canceling I is referred to people who have made transgressions, like social transgressions. It's not about not doing a good job. Canceled is when you make a, that's what I think cancel culture is about. Someone who like says something bad about gay people, says something bad about Jews, says something bad about a maligned culture. No, I think that there are tears to cancellation. People have, people cancel celebrities over doing a bad, people, the the, the canceling jo, jo, uh, Gaga after Joanne thing is a very real thing. People are like, I am never buying her music again. She's one think, of the worst artists. I think they're Okay, I don't think, no. People are not, social okay, canceling. No, no, no. People were not saying canceling. she's one of the worst artists. People were saying she's no longer good. No one was like, she's one of the worst artists. Okay, like, people were like, right I don't like that. her stuff. I don't think they were, I don't think, and people weren't using the term canceled. Yes. Sure, I don't know, whatever. But I find that most of the time when people talk about canceling, they are talking about people who have wronged a maligned social group that is typically uh, not a majority. Very level of cancellation. Um, so the, the theater that she performed at was the James L. Knight Center, and it seats 4,569 people. All right, it was the James L. Knight Center. It seats, 90, people. It seats about 4,500 people. She said that Monet uh, inflated it to be, she was performing a... a yeah, that's Square Garden. That's Square Garden, Garden Girl. But uh, that is still upsetting. Yeah, it is. It's, it's upsetting so. when it happens at fucking Barracuda. Barracuda fits 150 people. Okay. Crammed. Uh, 90. People. I think it could fit 150, but they're just crammed. I mean, when I was doing the show, it was probably, you know, 150. But probably when you were doing it, it was probably upwards of fours and fives of people in there performing, right? Wouldn't you say? Not even funny. Not pretty hilarious. Um, I mean, I'm front of Tiffany Haddish. Um, I think that. <laughs> she listens to this podcast. I love Tiffany Haddish. She tweets us all the time. That's not true. I would well, know Tiffany Haddish tweeting us. Yes, we do. We are fucking friends. I wouldn't know if Tiffany Haddish was tweeting us. But I'm verified, so I get... You I was that. verified before you were even a drag queen. <laughs> That's just not true. First of all, <laughs> blah, blah. Um, Now let's talk about actual cancel culture. We did talk about actual cancel. We okay, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I know to be cancel deep culture. Into, into cancellation. So right now, I feel like the biggest people being canceled are R. Kelly. Yes. Kevin Hart. Yes. And in the queer world, RuPaul all of a sudden. Which RuPaul has been, I mean, honestly, every season RuPaul, every season since. Which every episode. I mean, RuPaul has been. Ca- <laughs> Dear Duck Call. Go ahead. I mean, I feel like, honestly, ever since the she issue, RuPaul has been canceled multiple times every season, Girl. literally since then. Every, every There every was episode. the she there was the no trans women, there's the period dress, there's the uh, thing he did to Pearl, the thing he did to Jasmine Masters, uh, the, uh, every every season. Girl, I feel like I'm in I, I'm in that, that gift with like the plus sign, the, the cosign, and I'm like... Yeah, trying to figure out, yeah, every, yeah. Which is crazy because everyone like says that he's canceled, but then they all go back and watch the and show. watch the show every single time without fail. You know, I just and I, I guess the latest one is the whole period dress with um, so, Manila's on. Yeah, explain it. Yes, if you do not know, on season four of All Stars, Manila um, for for the the runway is curtains for is padded for the gods, and her original concept was a padded dress um, with like a big maxi period, pad maxi pad on it with like a red dot, and it goes into like a red velvet thing in the bottom, and I thought. It was fierce. And she's saying that RuPaul um, told her that she cannot wear the dress. So now the internet is like... <gasps> yeah, she said, she, her quote said, Ru said this dress was in bad taste. Right. Which, I don't... This, this is what I, I find that odd because RuPaul is not in the back looking at our outfits. And if RuPaul did say that, production would never tell us that. Right. So the original quote was, Ru said my original curves and swerves was in bad taste. Yeah. She said Ru said it. Now, as I, someone, I highly doubt. As someone who had an outfit get nixed, you did. You did. 
When? Your bikini, you said. Your swimsuit. Oh, right, 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 right. So tell us what it's like to have your outfit uh, canceled. So, for, so for <laughs> season 10, also, uh, well, for season 10, um, for the for the Martian Eleganza ball thing, my first thing was a burkini. And um, what what happens is that the producers... So you have to tell them what a burkini is. Oh, oh um, a burkini is a swimsuit that Muslim women wear So because it, it covers you from head to toe. But you're not showing any skin, all that stuff. And then I wanted to do that for my runway, you know, to show that swimsuits come in all different things. Um, and then the producers pull you out of the workroom and they say, hey, we don't think this would be wise for you to wear this. It's, it'll be, it's a little touchy, it's a, it's a little controversial, and we want to protect you so that you don't get... Because what they're trying to do is to make sure that you don't get people saying you are... Uh, you're anti... Anti-Semitic, anti anti-Muslim, anti anti whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. So they're trying to protect you. They're not, you know, and, and they tell you that. And, but also they said, if you really want to do it, you can wear it, you can wear it for one take. And what I, I what I did, I, I wore it for one take and I wore it without so that I can decide how I feel about it later. So you were there. Did Manila wear the maxi pad dress? She did not. She So there was no takes with it? Yeah, but I, I never saw RuPaul come and get her out of the room. Maybe they pulled her out and Ru spoke to her outside, but I, which highly doubt I mean, Ru don't talk to us like that. <laughs> he showed up on the <laughs> Ru is not kicking it with us at lunch break. Right, Ru is up in his trailer, honey, living his life. You know what yeah. I mean? So, I mean, but she, she insists that RuPaul told her not to wear it. Which, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that didn't happen. Right. I'm saying I find that hard to believe. Right. That RuPaul himself said that, and that she would know that RuPaul said that. Right. Right. Yeah. Because why would the producers, especially with everything going on, you imagine the producers saying, "Hey, girl, Ru doesn't want you to wear it." Yeah. Especially when consider that RuPaul has worn Confederate flag dresses. RuPaul has worn a watermelon dress. RuPaul has go, done... go back to any of his um, the, the, the videos on YouTube of him in the in the, in the late '80s, early '90s. RuPaul does and says controversial things all the time, like especially back then. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't think a period dress is Ru like you know. Yeah, end point. Yeah, that's the edge of the cliff. <laughs> He's like, this is it. This is the line you cross the Manila. I mean, yeah, they make. I mean, on on RuPaul's Drag Race, they make scat jokes. They make jokes about. I mean, every. So I just find it odd to. I find it interesting. That she would spin it that way instead of being like, I think that maybe RuPaul was trying to protect my image. Yeah. Because that could have gone either way. Because it, it, it could have been like, why? Like, it could be, or maybe there is going on out there. We just don't see it. A whole backlash of people saying, we don't need this man. Because Manila identifies as a man. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a cisgendered you think, male. You think Manila looks like a man? <laughs> With this cisgendered male. <laughs> Do you think Manila looks like a man? Is all I'm asking. We don't need this, cis, this cisgendered male to normalize a natural thing women do. And I mean, because that could be another angle that people... Yeah, which is probably... Which is, I mean, it could have been what the producers were thinking. I don't know. I'm not a producer. I was not there. Would you be a producer on Drag Race if they hired you? I am severely unqualified for that job. Maybe uh, like a story. A story? That's what I mean, a story producer. I don't know. I, I think I could be someone who like, like a challenge producer. I could be a challenge you, you producer. Would, you, you'd be a good challenge And I could producer. write sketches and shit, but I, I don't think that I could be a story producer. No. I think you could. I would need some training first. You, because you love to help people. You were like, I feel in this moment, Manila, that you. Oh, I'd be there holding hands. Now listen, did you or did you not say Monet was a bitch? And I'm like, um. <laughs> so I mean, so so do you want RuPaul to be canceled because of that? No, I don't want. No, no, no. Now, I think you're just saying it because you're still on Drag Race. Monet I, wants them checks. Know. Okay, Monet first of all, still wants them Drag Race checks. Is she afraid to say no to her master? RuPaul That's what the fans never, all say. RuPaul has never wrote a check for me. Has he ever wrote a check for you? No, I mean, I okay, did get a hundred thousand dollars. Did it, was, it, was it signed by RuPaul Charles? Uh, yeah, he, no. I mean, I don't. It, it, was, it was from World of Wonder. But what I'm saying is, I've, I have received checks from World of Wonder when I won Drag Race, and you also get paid to be on the show. Right. Not a whole lot, but you get paid to be on the show. That's by Viacom. Well, Viacom, because it was whatever your, your logo hand is bullshit. all in my face. Also, uh, by the way, lo logo is a part of Viacom, just so we're all clear. Hand yeah. But it's not VH1, honey. Oh, you're welcome, by the way. Yeah, well, you, what, what, what am I thanking you for? For uh, having a season of Drag Race that won an Emmy so people like you could get so on Drag Race and lip sync for your life three times in a row. You think that your crunchy eight episode season eight is the reason we're on VH1? I think the no last idea. season of Drag Race on Logo was season eight, so? and after that, it was on um, VH1. So, yes, I do think that my season was very successful and helped to get on the map. You're very welcome. No, honey. It's because of the work of people like like um, season three, four. So everyone ahead of me and everyone up to seven. <laughs>
But it stopped at seven, right? Yes. Work. Yes, honey. Nice. Fierce. This is a trinity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, honey. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, Miss Thing. <laughs> um, I'm a bobblehead bitch. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, but people all, the fans always say that we are getting money from World of Wonder. We like love. Bob and Monet are always taking up for RuPaul. We're just honestly just expressing. I mean, I, I, I know you. We're, you know me. We're just honestly expressing. Like, for example, when RuPaul did the whole thing about having no, tra no trans women on the show, and I spoke out when I when RuPaul said that, uh, when RuPaul said that he decided, that he, he was, like, trying to say when Pep's transition was and wasn't. I was like, that's wrong. Yeah. It's not up to RuPaul to decide when Pep's transition is. Yeah. That is only for Pep to decide. Yeah. So when there's something I don't agree with, I say it. And when there's something I... I, I say what I, I say what I want to say. All right, R. Kelly. Um, now, we need to talk about... Speaking of canceled, Miss Thing. Okay, we'll I know we, about I know, but, but we can still talk a little bit about... I mean, it's, we're talking about cancel culture. If you're going to talk about cancel culture, you cannot not talk about R. Kelly. Well, this who is the most... He is the Harvey Weinstein of right now. Well, this is the issue right now is that his fucking record and album sales are jumping substantially. I think it's because black folks sometimes fucking gross. cannot. You know what it is? Did you watch the whole the whole special? No, I just saw part one. I haven't seen part two yet. I watched the whole special, and someone said something that makes sense. What happens is, people are not. It's not R. Kelly that they don't want to let go of. It's the fact that they danced to step in the name of love at their wedding. It's the fact that they sang I Believe I Can Fly at their high school graduation. They are selfishly not wanting to let go of because if, if R. Kelly is a vicious, nasty rapist and manipulator, then yes, those yes, moments, yes, 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 then they mean, they feel like those moments for them are no longer special. I don't agree with that. I think that if all the things they're saying about R. Kelly in this document are true, and now I believe in... Uh, God, because I hope he goes to hell. It is vicious. It is nasty. He's If these things are true, he is a rapist and a very bad person, and he should pay sorely the for The ultimate things. price. Yes, the ultimate price. Because it, he should, I mean, he should go to prison for a long time. He's destroyed these, 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 these women's lives. Systematically. Systematically. But what but what I think is causing the spike in album sales is that... I, do, you, do you watch um, Red Table Talk with, with Jada Pinkett? No. Well, she was a little Instagram thing, and she was, and she asked the question. She was like, "Help me understand why the fuck y'all are still buying this music and streaming it and whatever." And what people were saying is that, "Oh, they're listening to the music to hear the clues." Because the Reverend Song is called the Pipe Piper. So you buy a whole album to hear some clues? No, you wait think... till someone on YouTube already compiles a full list and makes it, and you watch that one video. Okay, which you still get. Which, by the way, they, his YouTube. music is in the documentary. Right, so they're giving him play too. But here's the thing. Well, what I noticed, I, I thought about that too. Each song is less than five seconds. They literally play "Step in the Name of." Girl. So I think if you don't put, I think I think there's some amount of time you can use that you don't have to pay royalties for. Oh, I, think I don't know the laws, but yeah, that sounds fierce. Yeah, okay, it, watch it. Every song is like "Step in the Name of Cut." But I'm also trying to say, I I am I am Team Mute R Kelly hashtag Mute Absolutely. R Kelly delete R Kelly. But I'm also Team Amplify Sparkle. Sparkle has a song called We Are Ready. Sparkle is the one with the blonde bangs uh -huh. whose niece is allegedly in the video. The, 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 the PP tape. Yeah. Um, and I want everyone to go out there and fucking support her. This is her Instagram handle. Please go support her. Go buy We Are Ready. Stream it on um, Spotify. Stream it on Apple Music. Buy it on whatever place you buy music. If you live near a Virgin Mega store, go down there. And get a CD if you live Bitch, in, in the woods. What in the name of 2003 of that? Are you talking about? <laughs> the name of you talking about? Um, but that is how I. So yeah, I, I feel like in this, if people want to, why can't you separate the person from the art? This is why, because if you buy R. Kelly's music and you fund him, you, then that makes it possible for him to, do, to do the things that he's doing. He would not be able to get away with the things he's getting away with if he didn't have so much money. So it's not about money. It's not about money. Money doesn't buy happiness. That's, that's a scientific fact. Mm -hmm. But it does give you the opportunity to do much more suspicious things, and you can't evade the law when you have more money. That's just Absolutely. true. Absolutely. So now they're trying to. Now the other person trying to. Um, a much less egregious transgression is, uh, is Kevin Hart. Kevin. Kevin. Kevin Aviance. Who is in full on cancellation right now? I mean, he. Okay, so you guys, can we get some of the tweets pulled up? Kevin Hart. Um, some homophobic tweets surfaced from 2008. From 11 years ago, 10 years ago. Oh my God, 10 years ago, gag. From, and he said some homophobic tweets, and um, the Oscars said, hey, if you apologize, you can host the Oscars. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Hart 
had a couple of responses. Mm -hmm. um, so the tweets were. The tweets okay, were. The first one. Yo, if my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it over his head and say in my voice, stop, that's gay. Oh. No, say in my... Say in my voice. In my in voice. In my nigga voice. Oh, my nigga. Oh, got it. Okay, so he can't say... So he Malcolm Hart is, is, is afraid to... to He's to probably being nigga. conservative with the amount of characters he has. This is less than one. This is way less than one. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Maybe he thinks saying in voice is funny. I don't know. Then he said, okay, I'm just not waking up and I'm, and, and I'm in a good mood. So I think I'm going to go to the gym and get big... No homer. No homo. I don't even... Is that... No homo. I mean, I say no homo. Okay. Well, you can. Cause also, you're a that's homo. also something that I that I that I grew up with. In you never you, you didn't say that as a kid. Like I'm a up, little older than you. We didn't say no homo. Oh, that was a very Brooklyn thing. I'm not saying it's not. I mean, they probably said in the lines of which when I was a kid, that's not one of the things. Did you say no homo? You, yeah, no homo is a couple of years after me. Work. Uh, and he said, laugh my ass off at all the women asking me where the pic is. I'm not passing along a pic of my uh, of a naked man. That would make me gay by association. There's also other ones about AIDS and calling people faggots. Oh, really? and like, that, was a lot, that was a lot of wild tweets. Um, and his thing is, he said, I apologize a couple of times. Here's some quotes from him. I've addressed it. I'm over it. You're not going to ever hear me say anything else about it. I've done everything I can do. That was with Michael. Michael Strahan. And then he goes, if you can't, um, if you can't also get past this, then that's a problem with you. He also said, I mean, should we address these one by one? I mean, this is so wild. Yeah, let's do the first two. Okay, I, this was Michael. I've addressed it. I'm over it. You're not going to ever hear me say anything else about it. I've done everything I can do. Well, that's just a lie. That's just that's just not true. Well, I think what it is that I'm sure he's getting it from all sides. And in his mind, once he's apologized. What? <laughs> getting it from all sides. And in his mind, once he once he's apologized, he's like, what? Well, I, I, I don't think he knows no, what else he can do. Yeah, I, yeah I, maybe he doesn't know what else he can do, but also it seems like he's just not interested in continuing the conversation. Yeah. He's not interested in the conversation going further. Also, I've said this a million times before, apologies are not for the offended. Apologies are for the offender. You only apologize for yourself. Because all you're doing, if I punch you in the eye or step on your foot and I say, sorry, Who let's do that this afternoon. If I step on your foot on accident and I say, I am sorry, all I've done was let you know that I didn't mean to do. That's all I did. Now, if I give you ice, if I offer you an Advil, if I help you with your foot, then that is atonement. Apologies without atonement are only for the person who did the transgression because you're trying to let the world know, hey, I'm just letting y'all know, sorry, I realized that was wrong, or I'm sorry I got caught. But you're not actually doing anything that is literally just for the person doing it. I kind of agree and kind of don't. Sometimes just hearing the words I'm sorry, because sometimes there's nothing there's nothing that you can do to atone. Sometimes apologies is, is, is all that's needed. I don't think that atonement is always necessary. It didn't work this, here. Well, in this case, but I'm going to say atonement is a, is a case-by-case -case situation. Sometimes just hearing the words I'm sorry is what I need. We different. You need to fix what you did wrong. But sometimes there's nothing to fix. And I'm saying, well, sometimes it's a situation and there's nothing to fix. You just need to say, I'm sorry. I'm like, you know what? I, I, appreciate, I appreciate you saying I'm sorry. I don't think, I don't think they're, all, they're all, always only for Well, I think there's also ways to atone for things that you can't fix. For example, I'm sorry and I'm going to like also make sure you know deep down that I don't feel that way anymore and that I intend to change my behavior in the future. Not just, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk about it no more. Well, I think in, before this, he had apologized when he did his whole thing and he apologized. Like he did a whole sit down thing and said, I'm really sorry for what I said. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And now on, on Michael, this is like on day 17 of the apology. He's like, I am sorry. Jesus, God, I am sorry. I feel like sometimes people do accept apologies, though. For example, people accepted Aziz Ansari's apology. What did he do? Aziz Ansari had a situation that was like bordering on Me Too, but not quite. And oh, I remember, I remember. With a girl yeah, yeah, that yeah. may have been a little bit uncomfortable, and Aziz was like, I am genuine. For some reason, they took Aziz's apology. Maybe because they felt it was heartfelt, or maybe because he had, I don't sure. know. You see what I'm saying? Well, also, because, for example, there are times when you do, when you do something for me, Bob, and you're like, you're like, you're like, Monet, I said I'm sorry. Yeah, but I also, but I don't stop apologizing. I say, let me say again, I apologize. Like, if I, if I, because here's the thing. He did. No, here's the thing. But no, but he said, I'm dealt, I'm over it. I, I, I've never said, I'm over it. I'm never apologizing for that again. Bob, yes, you that have. I will let you search the your world, the text. Every, I've never said, I'm not apologizing Mitchell again. Mitchell Jade um, and Patty is the, Bob. Answer. Are. Don't answer. 
you fully have the moments where like I apologize. You're like, but I've never said I'm done talking about it. I've never said I, I said I apologize again. I would say again I'm sorry, but I never go are I'm you'll, done talking or about you'll it. Say, difference in being like. I've said I'm sorry, and I'm not apologizing. And you were like, but those are not like, the same. Saying I'm sorry again, I repeat, I'm sorry, and saying I'm, uh, I have addressed it, I'm over <laughs> it. You're not going to ever okay, hear me say ridiculous. anything else about it. I've done everything I can do. Do not align me with this. I've never done that to you. I, never, not once. No, I, I and I, I'm not going to discuss it again. <laughs> <laughs> I will that say problem with you. <laughs> ah, that is your problem. If you and if you can't get past it, that's a problem with you. I will say you'd be like, well, mate, Jesus Christ. I said I'm sorry. What else do you want me to do? And I'll say uh, and I'll, that's me asking, what else do you want me to do? I am sorry, but I have never said I'm done talking about it. That's that, that, why are you getting so aggressive? I'm aggressive. Mona, you ask me this literally every because day. Because I am literally purple. I am every so Every day you ask me, why am I so aggressive? Why are you still shook after knowing me for seven years that I get- Eight a years. Whatever. Why are no, you- Mona, years. you see me get aggressive over flaming hot potato chips. <laughs> why are you shocked that I still get hyped? Why? Stop fucking clapping. Why? Now you, don't, now you need to apologize. Now I feel a certain way. Well, I apologize. Well, what else do you want me to do? I think you should atone for your apology. How? Don't try not to ever clap at me again. No, I'm still clapping. <laughs> see, so you, you gotta, see? See? You see? The You're coming hard. Well, then, You're the difference hard. is you are trying. See, that's a big difference. This is about making a transgression against an entire community, and you're saying, please don't clap. This, you, I know you're trying to be, but it, <laughs> your correlation, it just, it, they don't sit side by side. It doesn't work. Okay. Um... And I think, so when he says, if you can't also get past this, then that's a problem with you. Now, now I'm getting wild saying, well, you know, well, now this is your problem. If you can't get over this, then this has to be, which I can kind of see, because I have the, done a situation where I have apologized and, and I have a tone, and the person still can't get over it. I'm like, well, now it's all on you. I, I have a tone. I was, I was telling Tari, what, what else? if you bump into me and my head hurts and you give me Advil, but my head still hurts, you haven't properly atoned. My head still hurts. So okay, what else am I gonna do to stop you? Do you want me to? Do you want me to fucking go in your brain and give and and, and uh, what else am I to do? To, 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 I'm not a doctor, but I know that maybe I can't in that situation. Maybe I can't feel less angry until my head stops hurting. But again, but I've done all I can do. So so literally, the problem's with you. That is for you to. I mean, I that is it's all. Yeah, I the problem is with me, but it stemmed from you. Do you see what I'm saying? The problem is with the people. I'm not saying he's wrong, but the problem is with the people who are hurt. But it stemmed from him. They didn't get hurt in a vacuum, right? They I'm weren't just, just standing on the street and then started getting their feelings hurt. I'm just saying, after a certain amount of atonement and apology, there's literally nothing else that the uh, that the uh, violator can do. It's like. I've given you the medicine. I said I'm sorry. I've offered, to, I've offered to take you to the ER. Your head is still gonna hurt. I did. I literally done everything. It's in my also power to say okay I'm sorry. for people to be like, I don't forgive you. Very true. It'd be like I don't. True. And they're like, what can I do? And they're like, nothing. I don't forgive you. Very that. So he can't get. If you make the transgression, and folks are like, I'm mad at you. For example, when I tell offensive jokes, if someone gets mad, I'm like, you have every right to be mad. But and I can't tell you, I, that's not true. I'm not saying I'm not apologizing. Oh, when I make a transgression, I'll apologize. But if they're mad at me, I can't be like, you don't get to be mad. You can be mad all day long. There's nothing I can do about you being mad. So you, this, all this exasperation with like, y'all motherfuckers crazy, yitty, 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 yitty. That's, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. So if you, do you do apologize for, so, did you apologize for telling really offensive jokes that people are offended by? What I said was, I said, I apologize for everyone who was offended by my Holocaust jokes. And I'll ask you about yours too. About my Holocaust, I said, in that situation, everyone in that room and everyone on that stage, we all agreed that this was what we were doing. So in that situation, that is why I did it. And my intentions were never to offend anyone. So for that, I am genuinely sorry. Does that make sense? I also had a whole other story, and this is people, the, oh, the comic about to get lit the fuck up. I was like, also on a completely different side note, black folks can't oppress Jews anyway, so that's not how that works. Like, it's, it's not like, I can't use my words to oppress Jewish people. It's not possible. I don't get, the, I don't know how that works. You, have to, you know you have to explain that to me. Okay, so to oppress someone, you have to have more power than All they right, do. okay. Got, like, got can, you, can the kids oppress their parents? Right. Exactly. I mean, if they all band together, they can. Yeah, it was. It wasn't a bunch of us banding together to crush Jews. It was Bob the drag queen telling Jew jokes on stage. Like, so like, so tell me about your Jew. Like, when you told your Holocaust jokes, did you ever apologize for it? No, because no one's no one was retouching me saying they were offended. Well, now they know. 
<laughs> Google Monet Sherry Vine Rose. You'll see him. No um, one reached out to offended. But if also, someone is offended, would you would you apologize? It honestly, I think it's a case by case situation. Well, I'm, I'm, I have a case. I'm putting it in front of you. Someone's offended. Do like you apologize? one single person in the entire room was offended, and they like send a message on Twitter. They're like, Monet, you, your jokes and I really offended me. Well, I would, would not apologize. It would probably be so. What, what happened? By the way, mine wasn't. Mine honestly was not a big deal. Almost like did the whole anti defamation league come against you. Yeah, it, it, what it was was Trixie's uh, cotton picking jokes about Latrice surfaced, and we were in the exact same show. And oh, then it was Lord. honest, it was, so what I'm saying was, so it was mostly Trixie being canceled, and then someone was like, oh, also, by the way, Bob also made some jokes. And like, oh, yeah, and, uh, and I, and I would have got away with it, yeah, too. Yeah, it, it wasn't for that fucking uh, <laughs> wing-eyed clown. And then they were like, oh, by the way, Jinx made some jokes. Oh, and over here, I see that so-and-so made some jokes. But also, that is the nature of the show. I knew what I was getting myself into when I did yeah. the show. I don't know anyone on that roast stage who did not tell offensive jokes. Right. Well, that's just a rest of the roast, and that's that was Willie's argument too. He's like, that's what a roast is. I mean, if you don't want yeah. to hear those kind of jokes, then don't go to a roast. Don't watch it. That's what roasts are. I agree, but also, but if someone is offended by what I said on the stage, I can't get mad at them. Like, I get it. You you don't have to get mad, but I don't think apologizing is a thing. I'm like, you bought you bought this fifty buck, fifty dollar, forty dollars. It's people at to come home. To it's roast. not people. It's not oh. people. But what I'm saying is, when I say sorry, like because it was, it genuinely was not my intention to hurt their feelings. That's why I go, oh, sorry, I, I, I certainly didn't mean to hurt your feelings. But also, when you say sorry, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, to me, that is a kind of like a half apology. How? Because you're not really, like, even saying, I'm, I'm, I think it's a difference saying, I'm sorry for telling those jokes, I'm, as opposed I'm, to, I, see, I'm, I'm sorry I hurt sorry your feelings. To, but I'm not sorry for telling the jokes. But you weren't sorry for telling the jokes, because you, you decided to put anti anti. No, I said, I'm not. <laughs> Sorry for telling the jokes. I'm no, not. saying, but you would say, but when, if, if you say I'm sorry for hurting your feelings, you knew that saying that joke would offend someone. I mean, uh, offend someone. You know what I'm saying? Like you knew saying a Holocaust and for, I know when I said my Anne Frank joke, I'm like, I know someone is gonna get offended. Yeah. So I'm not sorry for offending your feelings. But I knew that, that that would happen. I don't think that's that's not that's not how that works for me. I and mean, maybe that's how it works for you. That's not how that works for me. My intention was to make people laugh, and people did laugh. My teacher was not hurting anyone's feelings. So for that, I am sorry. But that, but not sorry. But not, I'm not sorry for telling the joke. Does that make any sense? For example, when I say things about white people being racist, if you got your feelings hurt, sorry. But I don't. I'm not sorry for saying that because that's how I feel. Yeah. I'm not sorry. Cause y'all are racist. Baby, I'm sorry. Nope. So do, you, so do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. I mean, it's, it's just different for me. So you like when I tell offensive jokes about white people, about 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 Jewish people, about black people. I'm if if you are black and you get offended by my black jokes, you're not sorry. I'm not sorry. A, I am fucking black. I can go the fuck I want to. Well, the other people. Tell me the other people. Yeah. Oh, the, the 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 killers when white people get offended by your black jokes. White people can eat a dick. If, if, I, <laughs> if I tell black jokes, if I say nigga, get the fuck out of here. Oh, Take your white ass down. Girl, the that happens house. all the time. They're like Monet. Wow, Monet using the N word and saying that joke. I'm like, who the <laughs> fuck are go? you? I, I don't. I don't even. That, I don't even hear that. <laughs> I do not hear white people telling me I can't say the N word. It I, honestly I happens a lot. Does it? Does it happen a lot to you? People don't fuck. People don't try with me. They'd be like, Monet, you can't do that. People, you're miscongeniality. I'm not miscongeniality. <laughs> I was miss, uh, fighting on my season. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Um, so, well, it. let's go through with his other tweet now. Now he did the tweet. Now, during his, during uh, the other statements, during his interview with Ellen, he said, going through 40,000 tweets is an attack to destroy and end me. I will say, if you are going through, this one has 40,000 tweets. That is a lot of fucking tweets. That means you are on a mission to find a You also, evidence. by the way, it is, I mean, he, I think he's uh, overcomplicating how hard it is to find that. You can type Kevin Hart, Twitter, faggot. Okay. Every, you? Yes, and every Twitter, oh. that, everything's ever tweeted with the word faggot will pop up. It's Got not, it. it's not this. Oh, that's what I thought it was. No, that's not how it is. Well, I try to find a. It is too. I've tried, I've tried to find offensive tweets about people before. I just went through this because I don't know what to search. So I'm like searching. Well, I just helped you. <laughs> you. You pick, you pick, you highlight words like faggot or whatever, and then they will pop up. Oh, well, I got some, I got some stuff coming for some people. In I mean, this it room. is, so, well, it's, it's 2019. It's not, we, we don't, we're not, we're not going through old, uh, you know, uh, what do you call those, those things? Yeah, get the, your words together. What do you call the, at, at the library it. where you, uh, a monocle? Put the, or catalog. Yeah, what is it when they put the newspaper clips and you're like rolling, <laughs> rolling through them? Anyway, it's not like that. It's, it's much easier to find them. So what he's saying is, he, Kevin Hart thinks this is about ending him. It's not about justice for gay people. How do you right. feel about that? Um, I, d I think that in this culture, I think that the the motive may be the motive may be to 
like make him atone for his transgressions, but I do think that people just start hopping on a bandwagon and be like, good, let's get him. Even though they're not still offended. I don't know. I think it I think it's weird. I am intrigued by the fact by how often black people are canceled, specifically black men, yeah. get canceled in culture. Um that bothers me. But also, like like uh, Amanda Seal said, in terms of Love what Ar- in terms of what R. Kelly's doing, I don't want to hear about what Harvey Weinstein got away with. Yeah, I don't want that. I don't want to hear about what Louis C.K. got away with. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about R. Kelly and what he did. You're right. It's, you know what I mean? It's like it's like when I was a kid and I'm like, but, my, but Justin did this. My mom would be like, I'm not talking about Justin. Same. I'm talking about you. Same. So I would go to you all the time. Oh, I would bring I would, if I would bring him, my brother, into everything. I'm like, you but like, Sean did it. I'm like, I'm not talking about Sean. I'm talking about you right now, Kevin. I'm like, but he did it too. And then like, I'm talking to you. You'd be like, but I'm ten sorry. years ago, Sean tweeted out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I used to get in trouble. So my mom would cook. And I would get in trouble all the time for while she's cooking. Let's say she went to a random room to do something. I would reach in the pot and take a piece of whatever a fat ass kid, right? And then she'd always catch me. And then she'd be like, "Why did you do that?" I'm like, "Well, Sean did it too." Like, I'm talking to you. Also, it's one just stop doing it. You keep getting caught. <laughs> stop doing it. I was hungry. But you can But wait. Just wait. You kept getting caught and you okay, kept doing all, it. Okay, don't act like you didn't know. My mama will start cooking at 12 o'clock and dinner will not be until 9 p.m., bitch. I'm fucking hungry. <laughs> Is that a Caribbean thing? I don't know. Whatever. I thought it was a black thing. Make jerk chicken take that long? <laughs> <laughs> so I would try to give me a little taste. I will get in trouble all the time. You And, you, and also, snitches get stitches. <laughs> oh, you know he's a fuck me up, too. Your mom was like, she gave you stitches, then he gave you stitches. <laughs> Girl, you are wild. Um, Hold on, me. Dab on these hoes. Um, but yeah, you know, I just feel like um, I'm not saying that this is not an attempt to destroy his character. What I'm saying is you still did this. Yeah. Like you did what is written on this paper. And this you is to, true. And you, and you have to live with that. You did it. If folks are mad, to get mad. Also, I don't care if Kevin Hart uh, hosts the Oscars. I don't. Sam. I don't even watch the Oscars. What is some of the view? They were like they should um they they were like saying like having like eight people hosts. I don't want eight hosts of the Oscars. That's a little ridiculous. I'm not watching the Oscars. I don't care who hosts the Oscars. Uh, wh- whoever hosts it, La La Land gonna win again. Ever since Oscars so white, I was like, I'm done anyway. You remember Oscars so white back when every every uh every uh-huh. actor nominated was white. Every movie had all white people in it. Oh, don't let Whoopi Goldberg hear you say that, girl. Whoopi Goldberg not a fan of that bullshit. What? Well, she so was like, we all vote. She was like, this is what it is. No, I wasn't voting. <laughs> I don't get canceled on finding success and damage. I don't get that. What, is that, what are you trying to say? Like if you cancel them, oh, canceling them equals finding success, like finding happiness in their damage. Oh, he was uh, Kevin Hart was saying that um, people who are perpetuating cancel culture. culture are finding success and damage. That's why they're going through forty thousand tweets because they're finding success and doing damage. Oh, like they're finding happiness and doing that. Success? No, they're finding like. Fiscal success? I don't know. I guess, yeah. You're saying going through this, yeah. I don't get it. Like if you like so if I go look at Bob's Instagram and I and I find something that he said and I post it, I'm getting I'm getting like financial gain from his I don't know if he meant financial. Well I will say this. People okay, there people is there is six there is money to be made in talking about Kevin Hart at the Oscars. There is. I mean, if it's on news sources, that's money. If it's on Ellen, that's money. If it's on Michael Strahan, that's money. That's if it's on uh, Silver Rock Podcast, that's even money. We got Patreons now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I do I do feel that. But also, honestly, I feel like as a comedian, this is kind of just one of the areas that comedians end up in. If you tell jokes that are offensive, someone will be offended. You oh, cannot be shocked when someone is offended. Absolutely. So, I, just, I feel two ways. One is like... If you tell jokes that are offensive and someone gets offended, you can't be shook and shocked. I've done it, and I'm not shook and shocked. Mm-hmm. Are you, when you've done it, you don't get shook and shocked. Mm-hmm. I've also never had, I've never been canceled quite on the level that right. Kevin Hart is I would say it is a little different when you, okay, he is probably, he is the most successful male comedian. Yeah, probably. So, you know what I mean? So, I mean, he he is definitely getting canceled on a much larger scale than you and I are getting canceled. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Before now, because, you know, the future is going to be popular. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Wait, we, so, host, yeah, we, we should host Oscars. They should ask us. Call us. Oscar. Also, not Ellen talking about I called the Academy. That is some white woman shit. 
hot. I called it like she picked up her phone, like, hey, Siri, hello, Mr. Academy. Academy. Hi, can I speak to James Academy? <laughs> Hi, James. Like that is so. That, like what? And That's why would she not recommend us? Jiggly Caliente said that Bob should host. She oh, work. What? Uh, she sorry, didn't pick no. you. Get cut, over this, it. cut this out. We're not putting that. You, we, you fuck, not fuck, fuck, pussy, pussy. We can't use that for this. This is not, we have, I say fuck pussy all the time. This is not RuPaul's Drag Race. We keep it in there. <laughs> fuck, so fuck, fuck, pussy. You kill me with that. Fuck, fuck, pussy, pussy. Anyways, so I performed with Kathy Griffin, actually, not with Kathy. We were on the same stage on the same day in the same show. Um, but Kathy Griffin did AIDS Walk. Mm -hmm. That was Joy Behar, you mean? It was Kathy Griffin. I was there. You weren't. Kathy, Remember you tell me the story about how you? No, Joy Behar was at the uh, Caroline with Broadway. the Caroline Comedy. Right. Okay, yeah. okay, got it. I have like a lot of celebrities. Um, <laughs> I mean, Whoopi. That was in Vegas. Um, anyway. Um, oh my God. I Leslie Jones. That was oh, like, all right. First of all, Leslie Jones literally sends me video, private Instagram videos like we. That like, I literally have two original gowns in my basement from Leslie Jones. She, Your videos, and I also get private videos. You just don't compare. She wanted to send them to me, but I could not. Fit the gowns, which is sending to you. Just, I didn't want to tell you that, but that is the truth. Monet, if you show a shred of a receipt that, that is true, I will give you one hundred dollars right now. I don't want to. I don't want to embarrass you. Exactly. Me, exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. Oh, flying, fly, flying the phone, please. We'll wait. Green phone. Um, Monet, do not waste our time because you know you fully really don't have this in there. <laughs> I forgot my passcode. Um, but what I'm saying, so I, I, anyway, so we did the A's walk, and then like literally two days later, she held the picture of her holding up Trump's head, and then she got she, she got canceled. Done. Oh, that was like instantaneous. The world was like, you're done. Yeah, but she held up a, a bloody president. Head. So that was a an example of cancellation. Um, but it, she recovered from it. And she did. She ended up doing a sold out world tour. Head after that. Yeah, head, it was called a heads will roll. <laughs> you guys don't remember okay. this? Okay. And it was sold out across the world. Okay, literally. then she's but fine. But she still got uh, investigated by the by the uh, the Secret FBI services. Secret Services. Okay. Um, she still got. She's still like on like a like a like she has to like go in for extra screening every time she flies internationally. It's like all this stuff. Word. So Which that, we know that is just in fucking media. That's more than being canceled. <laughs> that's being investigated by the you know the secret services. I wonder what that looks like. Do you think? Do you think that they like come to your apartment like go with like all your like fucking dildos and shit? I don't know. Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. Yes. Yeah, they like that is crazy. great. You imagine if you, what if you were the investor in the FBI? They just took all your drag away. I'd be upset, and I would probably feel the way Kathy Griffin felt. <laughs> do you think? Do you think if she did it now? Like, I mean, it was only a year ago. But... Um, I think it'd be about the same, to be honest. I mean, it wasn't. That, it wasn't so long ago that I don't that I can't foresee that. It would yeah. Be different. And also, since then, I think people have felt emboldened by her to start saying much more egregiously horrific things against President Trump. No. Just go look at Bet Midler's tweets, Cher's tweets. Well, but those have always been those have always been the, the radicals. But I'm saying, like, I, I think that people have felt empowered by her, not because she came back from it. And I think she came back from it when she stopped giving a fuck. She leaned in. Yeah, well, when it first happened, she was all she was on the apology train. But then she went back to the, you know what, fuck it, I'm not sorry. She was running the apology train local. And now that, yeah, exactly. And now she's like, you know what, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry, ba baby. I'm not sorry. So that's why. I, so that's why I think. So, short, long question short. Do you think that Kevin Hart should host the Oscars? The honest, I really don't care. But just to make the podcast interesting, um, I think that he listen. Okay, let's, let's if he let's, doesn't let's, want to, then he doesn't have to. But let's put it this way: not to make the podcast interesting, you are a voting member of the Oscars. Okay, you have to cast a vote. Can Kevin Hart host the Oscars? Yes or no? Yes. You vote yes. Yeah. What about you? I would say no. If I was a voting member of the Oscars and I was like, it's bad for business, I would say no. Okay. Yeah. I also don't think that Kevin Hart hosting the Oscars will do a rough thing for the queer community. I do think that people, um, I do think that having someone like that be still successful after doing something that is egregious to the queer community is a representation of how we are treated in society. And that could be harmful to people watching. To like because then because anything because anything that they can do it too. Because then or it's not about that. Maybe kids are like, this is what the world thinks of me. I mean, you you can say this about me. 
you can say this about people like me, and you can still go on to success. And, there, and, and the world doesn't. That's how the that's how the girls are feeling in this R. Kelly's uh, scandal. Well, they're yeah, like, girl. they're like, we, you can do whatever you want to black women, and no one cares. No one has our back. Well, it's also crazy to see so many black men like saying, like, man, you know, still still supporting him, and then to mention it again, Amanda Seals, she put out a tweet and she was saying, um, well, she she retweeted a picture. It was like. So so um so you're over here still supporting R. Kelly and still saying he's and still believing in him. So now you wonder why your niece or your daughter won't tell you that her uncle is touching her because you're showing that even though there's all this evidence against him, you're still in support. So why would she tell you? Yeah, you know, it's so crazy. So with that in mind, I do, and, and also like I said, it's, it's that he's punching down to a culture that feels. When you grow up, you do you you you're kind of just afraid to be gay. Mm -hmm. Almost anywhere, not yeah. at home, not at school. Back in the day, not at more church. so. I mean, I, the well, gays, I'm, not, I, I'm not a gay kid now. I can only yeah, be a gay kid in the right. '90s and the early 2000s. Just as true. I was very scared to be gay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, sometimes I don't want to fucking hold my boyfriend's um, hand in my fucking neighborhood. Really? Sometimes I'm just like I just don't want to deal with it. Oh, I like. I don't know. It's probably and it's, and it's not about, it's not oh, about, I love getting. I love getting the stairs. But it's also not about being. It's a, it's different. It's I know about, what you mean. It's I know not what about you being mean. gay. It's about, it's about specifically showing affection because when I walk down the street, I am super gay. Not right. as gay as uh, some people, but I am very gay though. <laughs> but also when I'm with gay people, I'm like I embrace it. I lean into it. But it's specifically with me. Love. It's my. It's my. It's, it's that childhood yeah. of having bad things happen to you for being gay. Yeah. So the, for me, the last step is getting over. Being afraid to show affection to my partner in public. Yeah. I feel Outside that. of a queer space. Especially in fucking Washington Heights where there are like literally 14 drug dealers lined up the block. Yeah. Like 14 of these. Of, of, of these. And bitch, let me tell you, I'm telling you from experience, a lot of these motherfuckers is homo thugs, okay? What's a homo thug? A homo thug is somebody who is, who is, is, is a thug who is gay. How are you not sweating? <laughs> Do you have Botox? I don't. I'm also fully wearing a fucking neoprene suit. I'm wearing a t-shirt. I know. No <laughs> pants. Thick no thighs with the dick rise. Um, yeah, homo thugs. It's, it's a thug who's gay where they're obviously DL. Do you know that 6 9 there's full on porn of 6 9 I don't know what that is. 6 9 is that rock with the big 6 9 tattoo, the rainbow hair. Oh, like gay porn? Oh, yes, girl. He used to take big ass black dick. He also has rainbow hair. Yeah, okay. Oh, you're saying That's gay. So I'm not shook. He looked gay. You even know who it was, I'm about to say. No, I, well, yeah, I know who it is now, now that you mentioned who it is. You don't know who it is. Yeah, he's that guy with the fucking face tattoo. He's light skinned, he got face tattoos and kind of long he's hair. He's not light skinned, he's Puerto Rican. Oh, I guess he's dark for Puerto Rican. Right. I thought it was black. No, he's Puerto Rican. Oh, yeah, your girl is pulling, him taking little, like, like taking King Ding a Ling Dicks, 13 inch dicks up his ass, getting fucked. Is it real? Yes, it's real. He used to do porn to make money. Work. So, so he used to do porn to make money to go into the studio to record albums. Take pipe late to lay the vocals. So we should cancel him. For having sex with gay guys? I'm being stupid. This is like a Tiffany Haddish set. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you writing for Tiffany Haddish? <laughs> on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I think that we discussed a lot today. It's an hour footage. You gotta go. Uh, all right, that's fierce. Uh, we got some good stuff in today. Stop rubbing my pussy, you fucking dyke. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my God. Can, yeah, yeah, keep that in too. I don't care. I don't yeah, apologize. apologize. Apologize to the lesbians out there. You're being so ridiculous. Also, Monet says she's not apologizing for nothing she just said. <laughs> she's not sorry. <laughs> Monet not sorry. What's she not apologize. What did I say to apologize She's not about? apologizing for your anti-Semitic jokes. She's not apologizing for your body shaming jokes. What body shaming jokes? You never told a fat joke? No, I have never told a fat joke. Monet, how do you sit here and egregiously lie <laughs> to these patrons, your siblings, yeah. your cousins, and your strangers? You, pay pay you love, you just love throwing the word egregious around. You throw, you put the word egregious in any sentence. Yeah, uh, you're like, you, I'm gonna see an egregious movie. That's you with press. <laughs> yeah, check the gate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a good conversation, since I learned a lot about you. I am. We have to get. I am a puddle. <laughs> I'm a fucking puddle. I'm sweating. Okay, that's right. Uh, all right. So thank you guys for uh, for watching. That was that was a good episode. Was all right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And oh, can we talk about that for a second too? Mm -hmm. We never talked. I think if you're canceled, you can't come back. If you've actually changed, you can come back. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, that's the crazy. I, I'll fucking watch Oprah 
and like there are former KKK members getting applause from the audience. Yeah, they put I've, down seen their that. Robes. I've seen that. I've seen that. But you can't forgive me for making a fat joke a couple of years ago. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a. But also, I think that, that the world is much more willing to forgive white people than they are to forgive black people. I agree with that. That's just how I feel. I said what I said. Um, why, do you, why do you feel that way? I think because white people are seen as nice. Er, nicer, as easier, as kinder, as friendlier, as more compassionate than than black people are seen. Mm-hmm. Black people are portrayed as not necessarily those things, mm-hmm. or the exact. Black people are either the 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 oracle who knows everything, or the nigga shooting up the uh, bodega mm-hmm. in 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 um in the media. Mm-hmm. I agree, that's very accurate. So that's why I think that it is the way. I mean, it it, it is. The fact that there are more black people in prison than white people should be statistically impossible. Because we are way less than the population. 12%. If every single black person in America was committing crime, all of us, and only half the white people, they would still be committing more crime than us. Gag. Because they have more than double us. Gag. So it is... It's... Statistically impossible for black people to be committing more crime. I also feel like crimes come from two things: mental illness and desperation. And, and we uh, 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 status. What do you mean? You getting that's desperation, desperate for money. Oh, yeah, desperate for money. Yeah. And mental illness and desperation. That's why people commit crimes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I can't think of any any other reason to commit a crime. I mean, I think that's a nuanced thing, but like the overarching. If you commit be. a crime because you're bored, you have a mental illness. If you commit a crime because you want money, you are desperate for money. There, I can't think of one scenario where mental illness and uh, greed don't come into crime. That's everyone, though. Crime. Yeah, everyone. All people. It's not just white people. That's why all people commit crimes. is because of mental illness and, and um, greed, which I want to talk about mental illness in the black community. For like we just talk about this. This is, this is a definitely different episode because then we can talk about 13. Because it was such a powerful documentary. I think oh. everyone, everyone in the world should watch it, Obsessed. to be honest. So listen, we, on, on our next episode, we're going to talk about mental illness in the black community. About, yeah, and then which will tie into thirteen. So if you which have the prison reform, watch thirteen, the documentary on Netflix, thirteen by Ava DuVernay. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, peace out and um, love black you, power. sis. What? I love you. Oh, that's so sweet. I said black power though. Oh, that was yeah, black. Wakanda forever. I feel like you notice that everyone does this except for Black Panther. He does this. Well, he has claws. I know. When he is a boy, he does this. When he's in cl- Panther, he does this. What is he? Is he in drag? <laughs> black, black, black Panther. I catch. Anyway, we love you guys. See you soon.